We looked at a building frame, and now let's look at that same concept of and how easily it's done in terms of a nesting uh, uh, a script or a Ruby file. And we're going to do this in real time. Um, realize that, remember, SketchUp Ruby API is going to be a big one. I'll save this one out when we're done, but go into the code editor. This is very similar to the one you have, but it's got a couple other little linkages, which is kind of nice. This is Alex Schreiber's, I think. We'll see if that one's still around when you're entities. Entities model. Remember, the spelling makes a big difference. You're going to want to learn to get um, a better editor, especially one that's going to count lines as you get error messages within these things whether you were working in Revit or AutoCAD or whatever the case would be, Max uh, 3DS AutoCAD product, Civil 3D definitions equals model dot definitions and then view equals model dot active view. You notice I have avoided playing with the camera I will leave that up to you to want to look at some of the other videos, but the concept of understanding how you deal with a camera is relatively the same as everything else in terms of dealing with coordinate systems. It's a nice idea to keep your spaces here. In terms of syntax, you'll see eventually kind of indentation makes it more readable. But let's think about right now, we don't have many definitions in here, so I don't actually know how to go about making them. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go ahead and make three or four blank definitions um, before I run this. For now, I'm just going to do this. Definitions. I'm going to go entities level one equals definitions zero. I'm sorry, one dot entities. And I'm just going to add then three entities to this um, level one definition, which is going to be just this repeating shape that goes all the way up through. And here's what they'll look like. Well, the first one might be something like this. And it's reasonable to do these points if you can to get used to this. Point one equals geom point 3D dot new and then open it. And I'm going to call that 000. That's my first kind of my origin point. Point two equals gm point 3d dot new and then that one is going to be directly over the last one 0 comma 0 comma 120 and the last one will be point 3 I'm sorry next to last one equals gm point 3d dot new and that one's going to be Uh, it's going to be one, we said this was 20, 15 along, 15 times 12 is 180, 180 in the X, and 0 in the Y, and 120 in the Z. And then PT4 equals GM point 3D dot new, and that one will be 0 in the X and 20 times 15 is 300 in the Y and then also 120 in the Z. So we have in fact four points. We can now draw those lines as we would and the way that works will be ent level 1. So we're not in the base entities, we're in the entities inside a block that was the definition 1 block equals, I'm sorry, dad add line open PT1 to PT2 and level 1 dot add underscore line PT2 to PT3 and then ent level 1 dot add underscore line PT2 to PT4 you get the kind of general concept here. Realize later there's going to often see these points kind of pulled inside of something else. And then, though you might not want to see it on the way, you also want to see this view equals view dot refresh. And 
when you run this, right now it'll have an error definition. So I'm going to quickly right away save this locally. I'm going to just put it here, building frame. That RB. Remember, don't save it to where it's forcing you. Save it to someplace you know where it is. I'm just going to save that right now. I'm going to now go into here and realize I've got to make a couple definitions. So I don't have many. So I'm just going to go ahead and make take a line here. And for now, I'll go ahead, right click, edit, make a component. Sure. Component one, create. Take that. And explode and I'll go ahead and make another one right click edit make component component 2 create that should be good enough so now when I run this at least there will be a definition there and we'll see what happens we're gonna go ahead remember we're gonna try to I'm pulling this in we're gonna try to always turn on the window Ruby console and we might not see it here let's see how that works let's see how it worked it looks like it did it so let's see what it did with it now I can bring in plugins window components and I should have in model something that's got a little bit more going on than you would think let's see if it did that so it looks like it did so it brought that basic frame in. So that's all reasonable. So now I can just bake it at the base instance. I can now do this. We'll go ahead and get that rid of a little bit. I can now say for i in one dot dot. This was five going across. Do entities add instance. This, of course, was definitions one, so we can add it definitions one. Definitions one, and then I need to know where to put it. And in this case, we're going to put it at zero in the X. This is now by there, zero in the X, or I'm sorry, I times. We're going to do this zero to four I times we had these 15 apart so 180 comma zero in the Y comma zero in the Z and it should go through if we now type an end here and it should go ahead and do it now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that if I can erase and go ahead and evaluate and you see now it framed that all in. Now, with some small caveat, I now I can frame it one more time going the other way. For i in 0 dot dot 9, do and we're going to change the y here is I'm going to say J, I'm sorry, J star 300. And one more end, and it should work. So this concept, I'll leave that one out in a little bit. Starting a component from blank, a little bit tougher. I think we'll take a look at that in class. But the concept of how that you can frame and get things kind of laid out very quickly. And if you want to think about it finally, you could do that one more time. For k in 0 dot dot 50. And now we can just change this to be k star 120. Once again, an end statement. And you get this concept of why, this concept of blocking and repeating shapes and W block becomes incredibly important. And the concept of understanding your spatial analysis and, you know, 
not only Cartesians, but Cartesians in three dimensions, and we haven't done any rotations, but it would be easily done as well. So I'm going to hit that button here. Hopefully when I run this, it ran, had a bit of a problem, so we'll see what it did with it. Or is it just taking a while to run? Because it's actually, it's probably just taking a while to run here. It should work. And it did not, and there it is, it just didn't refresh. So you've got immediately this kind of concept of a frame. Realize that these are just lines, they're not blocks, or we could go back later into one of these. We can now go into this, and if we wanted to, we could go inside of one of these, go inside of that, draft up, or bring in a shape. I'll do that really quickly here. push it out and you see how quickly it goes to fill in the rest of the building. So that is in fact I will put this one out remember this one um, does this kind of goes through that same process of a building frame with just some conceptual of, concept of repeating shape which you're going to realize in structural work there is a lot of repetition and so what you often want to do is to figure out what is that repetition not just in the shapes but also in the load patterns so we'll talk about um, in the coming weeks about the concept of bays of columns of girders of beams and have the concept of distributed loads uh, but we want to realize that by identifying the repeating patterns, we reduce greatly the amount of work that we need to do. So we'll see whether I probably started incorrectly on my scale on this, but uh, that layout and how that works is not too bad. Thanks for listening. This, will, this, this file will be included out in the examples. Thanks for listening.